Okay, this, I guess, is part three of a series of videos where I'm going through my notes. And uh, I'm on page nine of the notes, if you are following along. Uh, and I got to, uh, I'm going to go to part, I don't know, uh, I'm going to skip to part D. I want to find the x-intercepts of this graph. So this is the graph. Um, and I want to find the x-intercepts. So what I'll do is, because this is cluttered, I'm just going to add another page. I mean, there's... There is a limit, but I mean, there's kind of effectively no limit to the number of pages you can add. So just keep adding them when things get messy. So uh, here's cosine. I'm going to graph it. And then if I want to find the x-intercepts, I need to know where it hits the x-axis. Well, what I'm thinking is a really good way to do that is to actually um, do what I just did with the maximum. So what I'll do is I'm going to press tab. I'm going to graph y equals 0, or f4 of x is 0, the horizontal line at y equals 0, which is the x-axis. And then I'm going to use the famous combination of menu 8 for geometry, 1 for points and lines, 3 for intersection points. Click on the first graph, click on the second graph, and they all show up. And now you can see this tool is still here, so I'm going to press escape to get out of it. And I'm going to click and drag so that I can actually see them. And you can see that it's given me every one of the x-intercepts that was on the screen when I did it. So if I change the window, which I'll get into in a minute, uh, it, there are others, but it won't have found them because it only finds what's on the screen. But these are all your x-intercepts that you can see. And uh, that's pretty neat. So that's how I would find the x-intercepts. Uh, the question is, do you recognize the x-intercepts? You actually probably don't. Um, if you double this one, though, you would get 3.14, and that you probably recognize as pi. So it turns out this is actually pi over 2. And it looks like if I added 3.14 to this x-coordinate, I would get this x-coordinate, which means that uh, this is pi over 2, and this is pi over 2 plus pi. Um, and that's kind of interesting. There's kind of a nice pattern developing there. Like I'm, It's like I'm adding pi. If I add 3.14 to this, I'm going to get here. So if I add pi again, I get another intercept. Kind of neat. They follow a, a regular pattern. Um, so now I'm on page 10. And uh, there's not much left to do. But uh, I am going to insert another graph page. And what I'll do is I'll graph the function. So the function is x. And any time you type x and you're going to multiply it by something in parentheses, always put multiplication. You have to do that. So I have that. I'm going to open parentheses, do x squared. I could use the square key, or I could just use the exponent, um, x squared minus 3, and then parentheses x uh, cubed minus 2. So remember to get out of the, the uh, exponent before you write the next part. Uh, and this is going to work. Let me show you what happens if you don't put the, the uh, multiplication in here. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to press Enter. And you, it says, uh, I don't even know what that error is. It, it usually gives you a different error. Um, but anyway, it doesn't work is the problem. So if I put the multiplication back in, it's going to be plenty happy to let me go about my life like this. And so here's the graph that I have. And I'm going to click and drag this out of the way. You can see that I'm not actually seeing everything I need to, right? I can't, like the graph goes down somewhere over here and then it comes back up. I can see this, this is nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is zoom out and press menu, go to window, and then I have zoom box, zoom in, zoom out. I wanna zoom out, click that. Uh, for the center, I'm gonna try to zoom on the origin. You just arrow to wherever you want the center to be and then you zoom and I'm not, what is it? Maybe it's a factor of what, like two, it appears to be a factor of two. Here it looks like I can see everything useful, uh, so I'm going to escape out of this, so escape, and but I, I'm seeing too much. So what I'll do now is go back to zoom, and I'm going to zoom box. So I do this a lot. I zoom out, I get a, a big picture, and then I'll zoom box and just look at what I need. So I have that. That's pretty nice. Um, and then the question is, I want to find a maximum, I want to find a minimum and the x-intercept. So we actually know how to do that. So I'm going to do a menu, analyze graph, uh, maximum. So there's a maximum here, right? A maximum is where it goes from uh, like going uphill to going downhill. Uh, maximums kind of make sense if you think about them. Uh, so I'll take that. I need to find the minimums. So I'm going to analyze graph, go to minimum. Minimum works the same exact way. So I'm going to be to the left of it, click, drag, get to the right of it, click, 
and then I want to be able to read that, so I'll move it. And then uh, one more minimum, analyze graph, minimum, click, drag, click. So I have that. And then I also wanted the x-intercepts. So I'm going to do what I did last time. So it takes a while to remember these things, but what I do is I graph a zero, which actually I've already done at some point. So here I'm just going to turn this on by pressing enter. And you can see it. I'm going to press menu, eight, one, three. And if I click here, and if I click here, that gives me, so I need to press escape to get out of this. And if I drag this, drag this uh, over here, I guess. And then, yeah, what a mess. Drag this guy and drag that guy. So those are all of the x-intercepts. And uh, I'm going to cut this video here. Hope you found it helpful. And uh, good luck using your Inspire. It takes a lot of practice, but it's definitely worth it. Um, hope this was helpful.